Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, today, I want to present you my work with Marky and also non with Marky. <laughs> so, um, I'm working at the German Meteorological Service and um, try to present you today um, what I'm doing with radar, weather radar data. Um, I will start to explain to you what am I doing and then why and how. So, when it rains, um, we normally collect rain with small sensors like station data, so called gauges. But here you can see how they are distributed in Germany. Um, for example, like one week, some of rain on the stations. And we have an area in Germany of roughly 350,000 square kilometers. One of those gauges has a small thing to collect rain data and it's only 200 square centimeters. So the problem here is that if you want to have a great picture of Germany, you have a problem that um, most of the events where it rains, you cannot collect it with those um, stations. So here you can see at the right bottom, um, if the event is very short, there is roughly no station which can see this event. If the event is longer, for example, in the summer times where the event has, for example, 72 hours, this event will probably be also caught by one station. But to overcome this issue, we have radar data. Um, radar data looks like this, <laughs> roughly. Um, we have 17 radars in Germany. So it's all over the place. So we can cover the whole country. Um, and radars are sending waves in two directions. And then we can have such plot, like polar plot, which is not possible in Maki currently. <laughs> so um, yes, it's done with pie plots. And we do some algorithms to come from the left to the right to see most of collateral effects. Can also um, analyze this in a circle. So, for example, taking the mean, and then you can see at the right that there are some peaks to the downside of the axis. So that's where we have um, scrolled to collect strokes uh, that our radar um, isn't affected by the stroke. Yeah, that's a problem we have currently, but that's um, technique. So <laughs> I only analyze the data, so I don't care about that. I can only visualize it. And we try to overcome this, of course, with algorithms, but um, that's also a problem. But I have a look at rain and hail and why am I do this? So my questions are typically um, where is heavy rain possible? Um, where and how large is hail in Germany? So you can know if where you live is it really great hail spot or is it more rare than you experience great hail. And um, the climate aspect of this all is does precipitation change over the year? So at this plot, you can see how the um, events change over the years and the months. In the middle of the plot is 2001, where we started with our, our radar data. And in the, if you go from inner to outer, then we come to 2021. And you can see that in the summer months, there are more events. So there's more heavy rain in Germany. And you can also see that when there are more events, like for example, 2020 in August, there are more events than in July. And therefore I use radar data, as I said, but I use also the station data and also data from our um, crowdsourcing app, the Warnwetter app, and from the European Severe Weather Data. So, so there are a lot of data and I try to combine them somehow. And for that, I'm using Julia all the time. So for example, um, 
I have data also from the German Insurance um, Association, and we can see where, in which month of, month of the year there is much damage on houses or cars. So for example, here you can see in, in the top, um, the number of damage report over the months and the years. And you can see clearly that 2013, there were many events, so many number, a large number of damage reports. And you can also see that 2013, there was the greatest loss expenses. So there might be one event or more events, but one main event that um, lead to very large expenses. If we take every data into account that we have from um, the crowdsourcing and also station data, we can do this also from 2000 on to 2021. And we can now see that it's a bit of a different picture because we have more number of appearances of hail in May and in June. That's only the, the reason for that is that we have more hail, but smaller hail in May and June, but these hail don't produce that much damage. So more damage are cut. We have, um, we have more damage from large hail, which are more probable in July and maybe also June. And I've done these plots with algebra of graphics. So not Geomathy, I'm sorry, but <laughs> we come to this later. Um, yeah, here's a small example for this. So I have the year and the data frame and the sum of the um, hail numbers of events and also the damage, of, the amount of damage, the loss insurance. So um, I can plot this with um, algebra of graphics. And, if, yes, and um, we can have this plot on the left from this. On the right side, I tried this also with Marky to hack a bit in my plot. So I have a broken axis here because there's one these large bar in 2013, but I realized that maybe that doesn't help that much. So, well, maybe you can tell me if it's better if I break the axis there, rather I think it doesn't help that much. Well, yes. Um, so we have one stack bar plot and one without stack. Um, yeah, another try of me was um, to analyze the crowdsourcing data from the RAN data app. So here you can see on the x-axis the timeline from 2021 to 2000 to the end of 2023, uh, 2022. Sorry. And on the y-axis, you can see the reported size. So if you do a report, you can say how large the hail was this year. And then you have the colors and the bubble sizes for the number of observations on this special day. Here you can see that if the color is pink, there's, it's more probable that there are also larger amounts of hail. And also that there are more in the early year of the in the early times of the year and not in the summer, summer months or August. And also that seven centimeters and more is not that probable in general. <laughs> Maybe you have expected that, but well. <laughs> it's the same like the color, but I thought it's better to have color and size and maybe more better to see. <laughs> so we can also have um, shape data in algebra graphics. Um, that's also from the German Insurance Association. So where, oh, okay. The color bar isn't maybe hard to read. It's the mean number of damages and Per postal code per year. And here you can see, see clearly um, those pink lines that's, that are hail events, which have large number of damages in those postal codes. 
and therefore you need a bit more. But it's also very, I think it's very easy to do in Azure for Graphics Traffic with the visual tool of um, Coral Flap. Um, yes, you can add some text there. So have the copyright for the data at the bottom, for example. And my favorite plot, maybe you know, some of you know. Um, I did some work also on the Hexton plot. Um, here it's visualized um, where in Germany the crowdsourcing data come from. And if you know Germany, so most of you are from Germany, so it's maybe easier for you. Um, there are some hotspots. And um, you can see the hotspot is Munich, Berlin, Hamburg, Cologne. Rhine Main area and maybe Stuttgart. So maybe we have here something like um, an oversitting to the cities, and maybe we have underrepresentation in the rural areas. And this is done with Kairomaki and the Hexpring recipe. Um, yes. And then I want to say something to Geomaki. So <laughs> here we come to Geomaki. Um, normally, I'm working with radar data, so we have seen the point data yet now, and now we come to the grids. Um, yeah, from the radars, I receive such a rectangular view, and that's a bit hard to see. So Germany is not rectangular, so well. Um, so the first step you can do is to transform this one to a latitude longitude view. So this both plots are done with normal marking, no geo marker, marking, but you can do also the same for geo marking. So there's the grid, not not rectangular views, but something like that. <laughs> or if you do the same to transform it to latitude longitude, you have other tips on the on y axis. And to show you an example for this, I've chosen the lightnings. Um, in 2022. So here you can see how many days there were with lightnings in one square kilometer and um, the number of lightnings in total on the right side. And I try to analyze this with the hail data. So if there is hail, there is proper, or if there are lightnings, there's a higher probability to also have hail. So I try to combine those data. Yes, and you can make such plots with um, borders of Germany too. So it's very easy to see where the most of the spokes appear. And I'm doing this with a surface, and I take the grid pixels to um, plot at the right position. Then. And last but not least, you can do it all together. So you can have um, some raster data like this one. It's an example from the 21st of June, 2021, um, and the maximum size of hail. Um, so you can see there are some tracks of hail, and now we can combine it with point data, so from the crowdsourcing data, and you can see the dots have also the same color. And if they are completely the same, that would be perfectly for my algorithm. So my algorithm would say, at this position, we are totally agree that the human says two centimeter and the algorithm also says that. But to analyze this, I want to do something like a study, not with you, but <laughs> you can um, have, um, you can try to, estimate how large such a hailstone is. So it's 3D printed. And um, what do you say? How large is this one? You say it's larger than seven centimeters. No one? OK. <laughs> Five centimeters? Four? Three? Two? Maybe you can have your hand up so I can see. So <laughs> three? Two, okay, one, less than one. Okay, so 
you split something between two and three centimeters. That's quite good for it's three centimeters. Um, but yeah, it's not that easy. And to have an intuition about that, if people are good at that, so I can use this to validate my radar data, it's important for me to have an intuition about that. And for example, this is another one. I want to have the largest dimension. What do you think? Larger than seven centimeters? <laughs> Six? Okay, five? Four? Three? Smaller than three? Well, that's not that realistic. It's less than three. Okay, so also quite good. That was um, a five centimeter one. But yes, it's um, harder to analyze this one because there are two dimensions you need to count into aspects. And, but it's more easy to analyze larger holes than that smaller. Yeah. And that was it for me. If you have questions, please ask. Thank you. <laughs> So questions, um, comments, you have the microphone there. Yeah, just uh, I just wanted to know, are these things lethal, lethal if they fall on you? And does that happen in Germany sometimes, like the size? Well, yes, you have seen the uh, analysis of the crowdsourcing data. So there are some people who think evolve. that they see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so three centimeters is quite realistic. Also, five isn't that impossible, but it's very rare. Also, also only in one thousand and really. Yeah, it looks scary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I just notice you use that word everywhere as a, a color screen and on. I we just had a big argument in last year's that I really like that word as a as a thing for getting an argument. But, um, people didn't want that word, um, but you seem to use it everywhere. Why do you, do you prefer it for rasters, or is it the for for all the plots? Or? I think it's good to have one color map for all your plots, so they are somehow in one scene. But I like that more too. So. I think we have some discussion about it, what to use exactly at the German Meteorological Service so that everyone there uses the same one. And but that, that low is what you No, use. it won't be that low. Because no, no, <laughs> at the moment, rasters.jl has plots is in that low, but then the Mackie films are still in the with us, and I really don't like the this. So I'm going to change them all to that low. So I think in algebra of traffic, that low is the standard. Ah, so okay. <laughs> My main aspect is to get away from rainbow, so I tried Butler. Yeah, it's the closest to rainbow. Yeah, it's really good. 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 Yeah, the background where you don't have any points be transparent, and then the lowest value and zero is is uh, is dark. Then you if you don't have any data, it's probably also zero, very close to the darkest value. So yeah, maybe instead well, they try to reverse the color. So the dark, dark yes, side I is tried dark. that. But the problem is that you want to have a reddish color for the very high, so for the large high sizes. But yes, I think it's more the problem that you can't see the drum border. So I tried on the other one to make it white. Um, well, it's, I think here, Zero isn't really zero, so zero is transparent, and then it starts more or less at five, maybe the largest, uh, the smallest value. So. Yeah. 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 Ye